Hello everyone, this is Rose. Today's topic from the Book of Life is Summer Breeze. A summer breeze makes me feel fine, blowing through the jasmine in my mind. Let's take a look at this short story from the Book of Life. Reggie is a 50-year-old business owner of a nightclub and theatrical theater. Approximately 15 years ago, he purchased a two-story warehouse in downtown Miami. He converted the upstairs to a theater where promoters can rent for musical events. The downstairs of the warehouse was converted to a nightclub that has a stage for entertainers, two dance floors, two full bars. One bar is located in the back of the club and the second bar is located in the front of the club. The entrance to the theatrical theater is on the next street, parallel to the club entrance. Reggie has never been married or in a serious relationship with one woman. He has a 21-year-old son from a lady he briefly dated 22 years ago. Reggie proudly, I mean proudly wears the title womanizer. He has repeatedly expressed to his friends that there are too many women in the world to be committed to only one. He has been intimate with many of the women that frequent his club. Reggie's son, Bobby, has completed a two-month training course in bartending. He has passed the RBS certificate exam and is now legally able to serve alcohol. Bobby has collaborated with his dad, Reggie, to work with the club head bartender. Bobby is ready to get out there and get his feet wet. He know that he will be a great bartender. He knows all about mixing the drinks and how to put together what ingredients to make the preferred drink, drink or requested drink. Bobby is well informed. He's ready to get going and his dad is going to give him a chance. Now that Bobby is 21 years old, his dad feels the need to take him under his wings and teach him how to become a man in the same image of himself. Reggie feels allowing Bobby to work as a bartender at the club will help him in meeting women as he shows him the do's and the don'ts of being intimate without commitment. A bottle girl who works at the club has captured Bobby's attention. His dad Reggie has caught him talking to her in private several times during working hours. Reggie wasn't having it. He pulled his son aside to let him know that dating or becoming intimate with anyone who works at the club is prohibited. Reggie let his son know if it happens again after this warning he gave him, then one person involved in the relationship will have to be fired. And he let his son know it could possibly be him. He tells Bobby the door is open to the women who frequent the club. The visitors that come out here to party, the door is open to you, son. He says 
it's like going to a buffet meal. Working here is like coming to a buffet meal. You can choose as many as you like, as much as you want. Reggie decided he's going to help his son out since he pulling him under his wings and showing him how to become a man in the same image of himself. He figures, let me help my son out. So one night, Reggie decided to, to help his son by introducing him to a young woman his age. This young woman is 21 the same age as Bobby. The woman had come into the club to reserve a private area for her and several of her friends to celebrate her 21st birthday. She's happy. She's legal. She can drink now. So she wants to celebrate it at the club. After completing paperwork for the reserve space, Randy takes this woman over to meet his son. See, he, he's training his son how to operate in his image. He expressed to the woman that his son will be more than happy to serve as their private bartender. He also suggests that they exchange phone numbers should they both have any questions before the event on the coming Friday night. After the woman leaves the club, Reggie tells his son, Son, this is lesson number one on how to capture a woman's a woman of interest who is a guest of the club. I'm getting ready to show you how to capture her. He tells him, if you play your cards right, by Following my advice, you will have her in your bed within one day of the of her event here at the club. I mean, he was cocky with it. You will have her in your bed within one day, he tells his son. Bobby laughed before bumping fists with his dad. He tells his dad, okay, pops. I am all ears. Advise me on what to do and I will make it happen. The father and son duo grab one hand to shake as they pull each other into a shoulder bump. Then they laugh and walk off in separate directions. It's a game. It's fun. Funny to them. Friday, the night of the private event has arrived. Bobby makes sure the private event is set up near the bar located in the back of the club. He has assigned a server to the private event so that all orders for food and drinks can be handled as soon as possible. He was trying to make a good impression. Bobby goes over to see how things is going one hour after the private event started. The birthday girl was one drink away from becoming drunk. She was very happy with the service. Her friends, ooh and ah, as they witnessed Bobby whispering in her ear and kissing her on the neck. As instructed by his dad, Bobby calls the birthday girl to check on her the next afternoon after her private event. He expressed how happy he was that she chose their club. Then she began to express her gratitude for his thoughtfulness and checking on her, as well as for a wonderful time at the club. Bobby asked her if she has a hangover. As soon as she said yes, he offers to bring her a club remedy 
to help with her hangover. Then he giggled as he stated, to be honest, I'm looking for a reason to invite myself to your home. The remedy for your hangover is me. I'm just looking for a reason to invite myself to your home. I would love an opportunity to get to know you better. Bobby received what he was looking for. An invite to the birthday girl's house that evening. She invited him that evening. Just as his father said, he was in her bed within a day after her event at the club. Bobby now has become a master at the skills his father has taught him. He is spending intimate time with many young women he meets in the club. All in the image of his dad. A lady who has frequented the club since it has been in business recommends it to her friend Jasmine who is looking for a place to have her 40th birthday celebration. Jasmine is not a club kind of girl. She prefers to rent a banquet hall and hire a DJ and a caterer. See, Jasmine is an interior decorator. So she has skills. Renting a hall is suitable for her. So therefore, she feels she can use her skills to decorate a hall using some of the furniture she rents out through her rent a center store. Jasmine friend convinced her to come check out the club before making a final decision. Jasmine has often attended theatrical events at Reggie Theater. She has always admired the interior decorations of the theater. Jasmine friend captured her attention when she told her the owner of the theater is the same owner of the club. Oh, Jasmine was curious. She wanted to go see the interior of the club now. Jasmine friend makes an appointment with Reggie to tour and discuss having an event at the club. The friend explains to Reggie she wanted him to know that because she is the person who has been to his club since its opening, it's the reason for her helping in making the arrangements for Jasmine, who is not a club goer. She tells him Jasmine will come to the tour and, and to discuss the possibility of having an event at the club, but she felt it was best if her friend if makes the arrangements, the, the person who has been to the club and know the setup and know who the contact person would make the arrangements. So she wanted Reggie to know that this is why she was he was dealing with her instead of Jasmine. Reggie was okay with it. It didn't matter to him. Reggie thanks the friend for recommending his club after setting the appointment time. Jasmine and her friend met with Reggie two days later on a Wednesday at 4 p.m. Jasmine was just as impressed with the interior the decor of the club as she is of the theater. However, she still has concerns about her other friends coming to a club especially since many of her friends is not club goers. That was her concern. The club is nice. The decor is awesome. She likes the setup of the club, but she is very concerned because they're not club goers. And how is that going to interchange with the other people who come out to the club mixing in with her private party? She was very concerned about that. 
But Reggie, he's looking at Jasmine as she's talking and sharing her concerns. And he is smitten with her. He is just smitten with Jasmine. He's thinking there is something about her that cannot be put into words. He is determined to know more about her in order to find out what is the it factor she has that appears to be different from the women he had casual, intimate relationship with in the past. He's saying to himself, it's something about this woman. I cannot put my finger on it. But she has that it factor. That's when they don't know what to call it. That's when they can, cannot describe it into words. They have to give it some type of name. So it's called the it factor. What is it about her that makes her different from the casual women, the intimacy I have casually with other women? Why am I so drawn to her? Well, you know, it's something about her. I, I, I don't know what it is. I just got to figure it out. Reggie expressed to Jasmine that he understands her concerns about coming to a club to have her private party when they are not club goers. He understands, but he assures her his club is an upscale, safe environment that does not cater to street life individuals. He tells Jasmine this is why his door feed the feed at his door to get in his club is very high. Also, that he doesn't want to jeopardize the safety of his theatrical visitors. He reminds her, I have a theater upstairs. Although the entrance to the theater is on a different street, the next street over from where the entrance is to the club, it is still within the same huge building and the safety of my visitors to the theater is just as valuable and important as it is to my club members, club people who come to visit. Reggie offered to have his staff build a private room for her event by putting 10 feet partitions up to separate the front section of the club from the back section of the club. He tells her it would be like a very huge, very much like a huge cubicle with a private opening for only her guests. He tells her it would totally separate the front from the back. In the back they will have the back bar they will have the back the dance floor that's in the back as well as the bathrooms that's in the back all of that will be within the private room that they build he tells her that he will have two security guards who will be placed at the entrance of the private room to make sure no one without a wristband will enter he ensured her that her event would be set up so nicely that she wouldn't even know that she's in a club because it would appear to look like a hall, a banquet hall. He says several U-shaped seats with right rectangle tables would be placed throughout the room. Jasmine was impressed with Reggie's suggestion to create a private room. She loved the details he outlined about the room. She agreed to give it a chance. The event was scheduled to take place in two weeks on a Saturday. And she was happy that it, this took all of that off of her in trying to decorate a room, hire a DJ, hire a caterer. Reggie serves food at his club. All types of finger food. Salads, wings, pizza, miniature hamburgers, and 
you know, all the type of finger foods were served that can be catered as well as to open the bar, the open bar, the bathrooms, the private bathroom. She was just impressed and she was loving everything Reggie was saying. So Reggie found reasons to keep the communication between him and Jasmine open. He took on this project personally himself. He did not assign it to anyone else in the club. He directly contact her each step of the process in building the private room. He would text her an updated picture with a follow up phone call for her input. They spent a lot of time talking over the phone for the next two weeks. Their conversations eventually became personal. This is the first time Reggie engaged in deep conversation with a woman. Usually, he is a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, a hit it and run guy. He cannot believe the joy he is receiving from talking to Jasmine. Reggie made it a point to be available at Jasmine event. Not only did he take it over, but he was there, available, and was checking on things and making sure she saw him present at her event, running things. The event went well. Jasmine was so elated with how things went. She asked Reggie if she could take him to dinner as a token of thanks to show to show her gratitude for a job well done. It kind of stunned her for a minute when Reggie looks at her and says, no. But he said it because he only wanted to piggyback her with the words, let me take you to dinner to thank you for giving my club a chance to show you and your friends who is in club goers another perception of clubs. I heard many of your friends saying they would definitely come back to my club. Therefore, it is I who needs to be thanking you. Jasmine, she accepts Reggie invite to dinner. So Reggie and Jasmine agree to meet at the restaurant of Jasmine Choice. She gave Reggie the location of the restaurant that she wanted to go to, and they agreed to meet at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. When Jasmine arrived at the restaurant, she was on time. But to her surprise, when she arrived, Reggie was already there waiting at a table with flowers. He stood up to greet her as the waitress escorted her to the table he was sitting at. He stood up to greet her and pulled out her chair, then handed her the flowers. Jasmine kissed him on the cheek, on his cheek as she says, thank you for the beautiful flowers. Reggie and Jasmine sat, looking over the menu, discussing what they was, what was, you know, sparked their curiosity, what they wanted to have off the menu. Jasmine had been at this restaurant before, so Reggie was asking her questions about different items on the menu. And she was telling him what she had before in the past, what she liked, and what she thought was good. Then he asked her what was her choice for the night? What dish was she going to select for that evening? And what drink was she going to select? So Jasmine tells him. When the waiter comes to their table to take their food order, Reggie was waiting. He gives the waiter both their food orders, including drinks. 
Jasmine was impressed. It made her smile to see him take charge as a gentleman who stood when she arrived and pulled her chair out as in helping her to sit. He, she loved the fact that he had flowers, beautiful flowers. She was impressed. He was being a gentleman. The conversation at dinner went well. They both participated in the conversation. They listened to what each other had to say. And they showed that they was good listeners because they reiterated what each other said and made sure that they participated based on what each other said. They was totally engaged in the conversation with each other. And it showed. After dinner, Reggie tells Jasmine that he would love to take her on dinner dates to get to know her better. And he didn't want it to just be this one night. He wanted to be able to take her in the future, just them get together. And he wanted her to know it's because I'm liking you. I'm digging you. I want to get to know you better. Jasmine looks at him smiling without saying a word. Reggie asks if her smile means yes. She nods her head up and down at the same time she is saying yes. He said, I guess this means it's okay if I call you to talk from time to time. I mean, you know, I can't get to know you better by just taking you to dinners and not call you. Jasmine giggled. She said, yes, you may call me from time to time. As they left the restaurant, Reggie held Jasmine's hand. He walks her to her car, makes sure she was safely secure in her seatbelt. He asked Jasmine if she wanted him to follow her home to make sure she makes it safely. Jasmine tells Reggie she would be okay, but promise to text him once she made it home. Reggie kissed her on the cheek after replying, okay, drive safe, beautiful. After receiving Jasmine text, Reggie laid in bed daydreaming about Jasmine. He couldn't believe he was smitten by a woman. He didn't know what to do with his feelings. It felt good and scary at the same time. This woman has my heart in the palms of her hands. After hearing himself think those thoughts out loud, he couldn't believe those words came out of his mouth. Reggie was shocking his own self. He was going to limits he didn't know he was capable of going to. He was doing things and thinking things that he didn't think that was even possible within himself. Reggie and Jasmine continued to talk regularly over the phone and to go on dates. The two have become very close and is now exclusively dating each other. Bobby noticed something was different about his dad. He watched his dad float around the club like a happy, bouncing butterfly. It was like his body was present, but his mind was somewhere in the clouds. He kept asking his dad if he was okay. Yeah, man. Why do you keep asking me that same question, Reggie? asked Bobby. A security guard was passing by as he overheard Bobby's conversation with his dad. The security guard joined the conversation by answering the question for Reggie. He tells Bobby, your dad is in love, man. Your dad is in love. What? Shouts Bobby. It's impossible for my dad to be in love. He has never been in a serious relationship with a woman. How can he be in love at the age of 50? 
The security guard starts laughing as he replies, I see you never met Jasmine. Who is Jasmine? asked Bobby. The security guard said, ask your dad. I need to go sign in to begin my shift. So Bobby turns and looks at his dad. Dad, who is Jasmine? Boy, his dad was still floating on cloud nine. <laughs> he says, she is a summer breeze, sweet scented flower blowing through my mind. I met her several months ago in July here at the club when she celebrated her 40th birthday. Wow, Dad, I never heard you talk about anyone the way you are talking about Jasmine. What happened to the man that raised me? Who took me under his wings and taught me how to be a man in his image? What happened? He said, Dad, could it be you have fallen in love? But Reggie looked at his son. Son, I know I have fallen in love. I never thought I could feel this way. For 50 years, I played with women's minds. Now mine, mine, mine have been captured by a woman. I cannot get out of my mind. It's like someone has hit the replay button on a one sentence lyric song called Summer Breeze. The words Summer Breeze makes me feel fine blowing through the jasmine in my mind keeps playing over and over and over again in my head. I can't get it out of my head. She is my summer breeze. I met her in July, the month of her birthday. And she has been a summer breeze in my mind ever since then. I walk around smelling the sweet smell of jasmine flowers when I think of her. He says, I think the song is telling me it's time to get married and settle down, son. Reggie looked at his son. He said, as a matter of fact, I know the song is telling me it's time to get married. Click the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Remember to click that thumbs up button. Be blessed and safe. Have a peaceful day.